Conceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. We're here with Chris Fishgold, who fights on BKFC Newcastle on 26th of November. Chris, how are we today, mate? How have we been since London? Great, you know, great seeing. You know, it was a little bit, little bit of recovering after after the London fight, but um, I'm just looking forward to get back in there, you know, get back in and make up for what happened on the night. Mm. Experienced your first loss in bare knuckle. I mean, a fractured orbital bone. How did the recovery process of that compare to anything you've experienced in MMA? Yeah, um, it was it was fucking painful anyway. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. And do you know what? That that was the first time in a, in any fight in nearly thirty pro fights um, in MMA, bare knuckle boxing, boxing, kickboxing. That was the first time I've actually went down mm. and couldn't continue. So. It was, it was a bitter pill to swallow you know, on, the, on the night and after it, you know. Um, yeah, it hurts. It's one thing if you get stopped, but to say you can't continue, it, it did the hurt. And, you know, obviously, the, physically, it hurts. You know, it's always going to hurt. You're fighting bare knuckle, you know. If you lose a bare knuckle fight and you're not physically hurt, you know, there's sort of wrong. But um, in terms of mentally, it, it did it hurt, but... I think, I don't think you lose in any of these sports. In any combat sport, you don't lose, you learn. You know, you only lose when you when you fail to learn. Mm. And I think I've learned from it. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to get back in there as soon as I can now and just, you know, make make the necessary changes. And, um, mm. yeah, go to war again. Mm-hmm. We've, you've lost in your MMA career before, most notably probably against Calvin Cater back yeah. in the UFC debut. Yeah. But um, what can we learn from our defeats in your MMA career that can help you overcome and prosper when we come to Newcastle? Do you know what? I think it's more so, um, like with the case of fights, I always see this. I went down, that was hand on my heart. That was the first time in, what, 14 years fighting as a professional. That was the first time inside the cage and outside the cage um, I've ever, ever been dropped full stop. Not like I'm some fool gonna fight all the time outside, but I mean, even in the gym, every that was the first time I'd ever been, I'd ever, um, I'd ever went down. So I think the shock of me to go like, shit, I blinked and I thought I'd still be standing there, and I blinked and I was, so I was seeing someone running towards me, and I was thinking, shit, I'm being dropped here. Um, the shock of not letting me move where now I know what to expect. I think if that happens again, like you've seen it in that last fight, I did go down, but I jumped straight back up and carried on, and then I slipped. And uh, I went down, I got back up and carried on. And it was only on like the third, the third count when I went down, when I said, look, I, I, know, I knew something was wrong. Um, and, and yeah, like, I think, I think now going in, going forward with, the, with this, every time something happens, repetition's the same as everything. If you want to get good at something in life, you need to repeat it and repeat it. And you know, that goes with everything. So, you know, I felt what it feels like going down now in my career twice. Um, I know when I'm in danger and when I shouldn't continue and I know when I should continue and it's just, it's just me balance that's when it's all a job, it's just superficial. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think this time, I think if I go down, I know the extreme, I, I did break my nose in that fight and I did uh, fra- fracture my eye. Mm-hmm. If I feel that, I know, yeah, shit, I'm in danger, like, you can continue, but you, you know what that feels like now, you can... So to make a different game plan, try and stay away from them, maybe try and stay on the outside, rush forward, uh, move your head a bit more, you know, after you're going. Um, yeah, you, you learn, you pick up little things off every fight. And like I said, although, although I went down and I did, I did get beat, I'm, I know the extremes of, all well, right, it's just in your head. Mm-hmm. All right, so you need to keep moving your fucking head, if that makes sense, yeah. Mm-hmm. Set a square off against Liam Wilson, aka English Wolf. Uh, probably best known for his time on King of the Streets, the YouTube sensation. Now, you've got a bit of a relationship with Wilf because he's done privates with you, obviously, being a man from Birkenhead. What were your first impressions of Wilf as a person when he came to see you? Yeah, um, George, you know mad. We clicked really well the minute he came in. You know, it's not like 
it was just, you know, we covered it. it was like sort of arguing or something like that. And that's why we're fighting. He was a fucking super nice guy. He come with down with his girlfriend. His girlfriend's from Sweden, mm. and he, yeah, we clicked. He's a, he's a boss lad. There, he's got a good heart on him. He's a similar fight to me. Obviously, they were king of the streets. You know, I don't need to say anything. You've got to be fucking game um, to do that. Um, either game or stupid. Either way, you know, the both of them are coming at me in a bare knuckle boxing fight, aren't they? But um, yeah, he is. He's a nice guy. Um, I know we can hit. I know we can move. I know what his game was like, and obviously with me, I've had a lot more fights than he has in terms of MMA and stuff, so he's going to know what my game is, there's more footage of me. Mm. Um, so we both know each other's games, we're both, um, both friendly with one another. Um, yeah, yeah, I think everybody's everybody's in for a good night there. Um, there's no hate in this fight, there's no hate at all, we're just both going in, and we're both, try, both trying to take each other's head off. Um, it's just business, do you know what I mean? It's, it's good to know that though. Like we've even been speaking about Joe coming up to the fights and like um, it's good to know that like sometimes mentally it can get to you going into a fight, you know, if you've been arguing with someone or like if you think you see the guy outside and you know, emotions get to it where you think this little prick, watch what to but with this there's there's none of that. Um I've had a lot of fights, so if he comes and takes my head off, it's gonna look really good for him. And he's got a lot of really good uh, highlight reel knockouts going around. He's not not quite a few people out, so you know, if I take his head off, um, it's only going to look good. Like I said, this isn't MMA. Mm -hmm. This isn't King of the Streets. This is bare knuckle boxing. Um, it's we're both not we're familiar with it, but we're not. Um, we haven't been in the game for a long time. We're both fairly new to just this, so it will be good. It will be good for both of us um, to come out swinging and. Yeah, it's just business. Mm. So he's coming in uh, on his BKFC debut. What are your aspirations in BKFC after coming into your second fight? Does this fight put you anywhere near towards the title, or are you just all for the exhibitionism? Well, you know what? A few people have asked me stuff like this. Like when I when I got into being on a whole boxing, people were like, um, like, where do you want to get with it? Mm. And like, it's it's getting big. This is one of the fastest growing sports. Um, not just in combat sports, in sports full stop. Um, it's got an amazing following. And I think, if I go out and, and beat this guy, I know the next fight, they're coming up in um, BKFC, they're coming to be the Liverpool or Manchester. So I'm, I'm hoping to headline on one of them. Mm -hmm. um, fingers crossed anyway. But if I don't, though the worst happens, um, I want to I wanna get back into MMA soon anyway. So this is good. It's keeping me active and, you know, me ground. I don't need to win. I don't need to prove nothing to the ground. People have seen me submissions and stuff. You know, people, the holes where people said I had in my games for MMA was in the striking. And, you know, I mean, every one of these fights, I'm showing people I can, you know, I can fight like fuck when it comes to the stand-up as well. So, yeah, hopefully I want to go out, I want to win. Um, Another win on the record, no matter what um, discipline it is, it's always it's only going to be good for you. Um, if I end up beating beating someone and headlining the Liverpool Manchester card, I'll be made up with that. You know, it's close close to home. Mm -hmm. um, worst comes to worst, and you know, I didn't headline that. It's not I'm not too bothered because I know I'm going to um, carry on fighting MMA. But like either way whether I headline the show or I don't headline the show, um, I am coming out there to, to win in this fight. You know, every single fight I go into, it's not like, oh, well, if I don't win, no, I am always coming to win. Do you know what I mean? You'll never hear me say, if I if beat this guy, it's going to be good. And if I don't win, I'm up. I'm always coming to win, you know. Yeah, just in case you got that confused, then with it being, um, if I don't headline the Liverpool show, I'm just speaking about headlining the show. Mm. Yeah, um, in terms of winning, I'm going out there to take us head off, yeah. FCC, the Northwest promotion, I put a couple of posts out recently saying you're looking for a fight, you're looking to get back into MMA. What does your schedule look like now? Obviously, we've got two different sports. You're looking to be as competitive as possible in both of them. How much grappling are you doing and how much MMA-focused stuff are you doing when you've got this big BKFC fight coming up? Um, I, To be honest, I, I, I always keep me foot in a bit of grappling anyway. Yeah. And you know, I used to go out, I used to wrestle with people, take people down and uh, beat them up on the ground and then sub them. Um, 
I would admit I'm not maybe not wrestling as much as I should, but you know, I'm doing a lot more striking. I'm not gonna need to wrestle as much. You know, I'm still doing my grappling, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna, you know, go to town, go to town on your face with these, and you're either gonna get knocked out or you're gonna need to take me down. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do take me down, I'm still doing my jitsa, so be off my back, you know. So mm -hmm. um, in my head, I'm, I've got a game plan for everything, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Even even now, I'd put myself up against anybody, and I mean anybody, my weight. And, you know, I think you, if you look at my style, you look at me training, you look at me fights, there's a way I can beat anybody, no matter what the discipline is, no matter what the style is. And, you know, you get some guys where they need to win a decision or he will need to get them down to, you know, to get this win or he'll need to keep it standing to get this win. Yeah, I think I've showed that I can, I can beat people anywhere. So you need to be oh, on, on the ball. Um, switched on mm. from start of the fight to the end of the fight in every whether it's standing going to the ground um, or on the ground you know mm. yeah you said before in a previous interview how bare knuckle fit better for your lifestyle for you know better quality of life let's say you're doing yeah. two minute three two minute rounds the cardio probably isn't as intensive as what you need for MMA yeah now with Ambitions to get back into MMA. How what, what's your lifestyle like? Are you are you starting to hone in on these things now? Um, yeah, Joe. You know, I've got I've got. I'm starting to. Um, at the time, like I said, it was easier. So if you just doing one discipline, you come mm. in, you train for an hour, two hours, and it's done. Mm. Um, MMA, you know, you need to you need to be free all day, every day for everything. Um, I've had a couple of things that I've. Um, being in my life at the moment, I wouldn't say the scares. It's not they're not really scares, but um, it's made me plan plan a lot more. And um, you know, you might hear about some of the stuff coming up pretty soon. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm just trying to I'm trying to get the best best quality of life for me, my family around me. Um, I'm making the time. You know, I think last time I just didn't want to be in the gym five hours a day. I only wanted to do an hour. Mm. Whereas it's a bit different. Now I do want to be there, so um, if that makes sense, yeah, so. Okay, last question for you. We've got BKFC coming up next month. You're calling for a fight on FCC. How active do you anticipate being for before the end of the year? And what are your ambitions for 2023 if all goes to plan? Um, to, to be honest, if I can fight every week, I'd fight every week. I, re I, I know people say that. I honestly handle my heart, truly being that. Uh, and I'm not bothered too much about weight either. Um, you know, I'm, my 66 days are over, but from 70 all the way up to 84, you know, um, offer me fights and, you know, I guarantee the majority, I, I'll take them. Um, I just want to be as active as possible. You know, I'm in my 30s now. By the time I turn 31, you know, I want to be knocking on the UFC's door or another big promotion again. Um, and yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm, what now, I'm 30 now, I've got maybe 15 years left at a higher level, I'm hoping. So, you know, let's get these fights going. You know, if you're looking for a fight, you know, hit me up.